I have been excited about doing this video for so long, I can't believe I'm finally ready to do it. I have been hosting servers in this house for so many years now. It's ridiculous. Big rack mounted 1U and 2U servers and oh, it just became too much. The noise of them and I had one tucked behind a bookshelf for a few years and uh, I had a few under the stairs for a while at night. That, 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 those servers that time actually used to heat the whole downstairs of the house. But at night you'd actually feel the vibration of the, of the servers. Like these things are meant to be in cooled server rooms, in racks. But I was hosting them on my, under my stairs. And then the cloud came along and I decided let's go and throw everything into the cloud. And then my bank balance disappeared so I said let's bring everything back into the house again. So how do you sort the issue of heat and noise? At the moment all you can hear is I have a few PCs on but that's okay. Excuse my uh, my uh, lockdown haircut or lack thereof. <laughs> but this video is going to show you about my new way of hosting a server at home. It's cool. Come with me. Computer turn off the office lights. Alright, so let's go through a few of the things in this little room here, which is a tiny little room. So, we have our ubiquity access point here, we have a socket here for the lights, that's just grand. One power plug for the server, because it's all it needs, then one ethernet cable for the access point, and one for the server, because it's only a test machine for test stuff. But here's where it gets interesting. So if you look here, there's a, the server is in a tiny, tiny little shelf, purpose-built for this server. Now you might notice the lights going red, that's only because one power supply is plugged in. Absolutely harmless. Connected to the server is a little Arduino. And thank you to a friend of mine who made that little enclosure for that. That is amazing uh, work. And that Arduino is used for detecting CO2, smoke, and temperature, and humidity. And I'm going to show you that in a while. But the server is flat against this concrete roof. And the heat dissipates that through that. There's also some ducting that goes behind that piece of wood there and comes out along this wall here and then out the side into this little few holes here in the side here. So the hot air comes out through there. It's such a cool design. I didn't think this would work and it works really well. Average temperature here is about 21 degrees. It fluctuates between about 20 and 23, but hasn't gotten higher than 23, even on hot days. What seems to happen, which is cool, I didn't realize it would happen, is a lot of the heat gets conducted up into this concrete and gets dissipated away then. There's metal in this concrete because it's load bearing, if we want it to be. And uh, it just dissipates through there. I really didn't expect it to work so well. A lot of hot air, is in behind there as well which is absolutely fine that piece of wood and then gets pushed out uh, through the air vents so there is always fresh air coming in through those air vents one valve is closed going out this way and one valve is closed going in this way so one will always give fresh air and one will always take uh, air out obviously of course though the server is sucking in its air through here so this part you always want to keep cool and this is where I have the Arduino so that I can check the temperature of out here because that's what's really important. So there you have it, that's my cool server idea. I do still have cloud stuff. So I have the, I have two domain controllers and I'm going to show you all of that back inside right now. Diary of a server, who cares? Well, I do because it's kind of cool. Why do you need a server? People might ask, well, I'll tell you why. I run software and I do things that's kind of, yeah, it's a bit different. I write some software sometimes, I play around with a lot of different systems and I need to keep up to date with new technologies and new softwares and new ways of doing things as well. And sometimes you need to be able to just blow away what you've done and not show people how much of a mess you've made of things, but you know, sometimes you need to you're gonna do things differently and you're gonna go oh, okay I'm, I like that I'm gonna put it into 
production somewhere else or maybe I'll use that for a, a piece of work that I'm gonna do or whatever. So the server is good. I like the server, the way it's ventilated and the heat is working really well and the airflow is perfect and all of that kind of stuff. But you can't just say out of sight, out of mind. Just because it's out there and you can't hear it doesn't mean that it may be encountering trouble or whatever. So what I did was I wrote a cool application, if I may say so myself. And I just let you give it, have a look there, right? So you can see there, there's a right hand side graph there. And that graph shows you the temperature as it's been fluctuating throughout the last hour or so. And then on the left hand side, you see a report of what's happening as things go on. And then on the top left, you see the actual temperature right now. So that shows what's happening in terms of temperature and humidity. And if the door opens, then a thing will come up in the system tray on the bottom right hand corner here to say yeah, the door is open or if the temperature is high it'll say the temperature is high or temperature is low or humidity is high or whatever and these boxes change colour as well just why not I was doing it so I said ah sure I'll make that happen as well so why not so that's kind of cool now the reason why it's cool for me is because it let me work with something called web API so Right, let's get rid of that. Um, we'll bring up this browser window here. So you'll see there, it just gives you a string of text. It's called JSON format. And that gives you the time that the sensor reading was polled. Uh, it gives you the degree Celsius, the humidity, the whatever, you know, as the door been opened, the time, uh, is it minute or hour? Because that makes the different things happen in, in the client side as well. So. It's kind of cool that that just works. So it sits in the server doing all that things, doing all that all the time and it stores it to a little database on the server as well. Um, now, one of the things I got to work on straight away when I was doing this, it's not actually something very straightforward, but it makes a huge amount of sense in a test server. And that is, you don't need a test server running all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes it can be powered off, but if you have a test server, you most likely have a domain on it or you're authenticating or something, you're using it for DNS. So what I did was, let's throw you over there and bring up this and let's bring up Windows Administrative Tools and bring up Sites and Service. So what I did was I created a I've created two sites in Active Directory, one called Azure and one called Home. And I have the domain controller for Home in there and I have the domain controller for Azure there because I have it set up. Let's look up, dd.local, dd stands for digital of course. And you see there I have 192.168.252.5 and that's the Azure domain controller. And then I have 192.168.2. sorry, 1.211. And that's the one for at home. So it means I can turn off that server and everything will still work because I can still all get to the Azure domain controller. But if the domain controller in the house here is turned on, it will use that domain controller. So it'll, it'll give faster responses and all that kind of stuff. I do have a really good internet connection here. So my response times to the domain controller are typically about three milliseconds to the Azure uh, domain controller, which is really, really, really good. And then obviously it's the same for DNS. I can pull DNS um, on, uh, the, on the Azure side or on the local side and the, the VPN is done on my router side so it doesn't you know it's never going to depend on the uh, server for that and obviously on the server I'm running uh, Hyper-V and I'm, well, not, I, I'm not obviously Hyper-V on the server but it is running Hyper-V on the server and uh, several virtual machines running on that so I have IIS for web interface or web browsing I have Nginx on my Linux VM, I have uh, Microsoft SQL running on one server as well, and then I have um, oh, loads of stuff. I have a piece of man manage engine stuff running as well, testing at a service desk tool, and loads of different things running all over the place uh, just to test them out. And they may get powered on permanently and on somewhere else or moved over somewhere else. They might get moved to Azure at some point. Or they might get deleted because I decided I'm bored of you. Go away. But either thing, I do, the thing about it is I have the flexibility to do that. I don't need loads of servers. I have 
120 gig of RAM in this. I have plenty of processing power. It doesn't get hot. It is out of the way. It's not noisy. To me, that is the perfect home server setup. Thanks for watching.